Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. If this is your first time to the channel, my name's Franco. I'm a professional engineer, a lure designer and lure maker, and an avid angler. And I make these videos so I can add a little bit of physics and engineering into the art of lure making. So today we're not making a lure, we're making a small attachment for a soft plastic. Let me show you. All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how I made that floaty tail thing, and I'm going to make a mold so I can make multiple of them instead of just having one. So this way I can have a bunch of them in my tackle box. So to make the master, you're going to need some wire nuts. And it just occurred to me, I don't know exactly what size wire nut this is. They're one inch long, quarter inch at the narrow end, and half inch at the wide end. And you're going to need three of these, these drywall, anchoring screws that have the broad uh, fin style threads. I found these in the local big box home improvement store. So I'm going to make three. I'm going to make three masters and this way I can make a three chamber mold and I can pour three at a time. Now the only other material you're going to need is some kind of a filler so that you can fill that very end there on top of the screw head so that you can have a nice flush surface on the top. You can use anything, body putty, wood putty, spackle, whatever you feel uh, it's easy to use and will set up fast for you. I'm just going to use uh, this JB Weld two-part epoxy. All right, so the first step is going to be to drill a hole in the very small end of it. And if you have the type of wire nut that has the little wire coil in it, then you're going to need to use a, a bit, not so small so it'll go through the hole, but not so big so it'll cover it completely. You want to kind of have it jam so as you turn the bit, it'll sort of turn that little coil and get it out of there. Now we've got a small hole on the end. I need to make a bigger hole to fit the diameter of this thing. And in this case, it's 3 16 All right, so the next really simple step is to jam this thing in there. And then with a Phillips screwdriver, just screw it in as far as you can. And there you go. All right, let's go ahead and cut us some of this JB Weld, and I'll just eyeball it the size of the piece I need. And it's just a matter of kneading this until the white and the gray combine to make a light gray. And a little bit of alcohol on your fingers can help a lot with the stickiness. I'm going to press it in there and then trim away what I don't need. I'm not too worried about the texture on it because that'll get sanded down. All right, not too much waste, just a mess. We just need to wait for these guys to set. All right, so these guys are set up now. They're good and hard. And all I'm gonna do now is flatten them out using this piece of 220 sandpaper on a flat surface. And it's pretty quick work. So once I get all three of these nice and flat, we'll get back to doing the next step. All right, that's the last one. And I'm just taking a little bit of sandpaper and taking the hard edge off of it. And that's what it ends up looking like. And they should sit nice and flush and be even at the top. I need to drill a hole all the way through it to be able to add the little tentacles. So the first thing I do is to draw a quick scribbled line uh, just to divide it in two so that I can then 
put a dot right in the middle of this little flange and on the other side too and the idea is to drill through. Now I'm going to use an eighth inch bit and I'll show you why in a minute. First I'm going to put a little pilot hole in it. I'm going to make sure I can guide myself by that little line I made. And then we upsize. All right, so I've got all the holes drilled. And the reason I used an eighth inch bit is because I'm going to need to sort of align these guys in the mold with a little steel rod. Or actually, this is aluminum. But it occurred to me that a lot of people aren't going to have just a random piece of aluminum eighth inch rod laying around. I'm going to use the inside of an old pen. Actually, this is a new pen, but that's okay. As long as the ink doesn't come out, I'm, I'm good. And the good thing is, is that we'll, this will slide right in and fit it right in that hole, nice and snug. So these will sit inside my little mold case, just like this, so that I can pour the silicone around them. So now let's make the mold case. I'm gonna use this piece of glass as a base, and I'm gonna use these little tabs that came off an old box for the sides of this mold case. And all I really need to do is mark about the height I need, which turns out to be about one and three quarter inch. So by now you may have figured out that I'm just doing a, a one part mold and not a two part mold. So I'm gonna take these pieces that I've cut to length and just hot glue them down on here. So first thing, I wanna glue this down to the glass. And for that, I'm gonna use some crazy glue. And that'll be a very temporary bond uh, because it's glass after all. Then I'm gonna run a line of hot glue and set that first piece in it. And as you can see, I'm just kinda of eyeballing this first piece. Everything else, will settle in in accordance to that one. And so on, until we got this thing put together and sealed. All right, well, I'm gonna let this thing cool off a little bit. One other little detail is venting. Uh, since I'm actually gonna be pouring this from this side, once it's all pulled apart, I need to vent these little cavities a little bit uh, so that the uh, resin will pour in there and won't just develop a giant bubble. So to do that, I'm gonna vent it through the very bottom. And I'm gonna use this little tiny red hose that comes from um, a lubricant can. And I'm just gonna cut three pieces about a half inch long and just wedge it on those peaks All right, I'm ready to go ahead and mix and pour uh, the silicon into the mold. And I'm using the Smooth On Umu 30 product. It's a little different than most. Uh, by weight, it's mixed uh, 1 to 1.3. So it's a little odd. I did calculate the amount of volume I need. I need 134 cubic centimeters, which is 134 milliliters. Now, the good part is that you can mix it 1 to 1 by uh, volume. So I've got this cup marked at the halfway point and the full point and I did that just by using water in a measuring cup. And I'm going ahead and weighing it just for future reference. This is messy stuff. The part B is less viscous and you can actually shake it. Now it's a matter of turning this into one color and not these two hippy dippy colors. All right, and it's time to pour. And of course, like always, I wanna pour in a very thin stream and 
just let it sort of spread from one corner out. Look at that, my volume calculations were pretty much right on the money. Go figure. All right, so now it's just a matter of letting this thing set up and that'll take about six to eight hours. So we'll get back to this tomorrow. All right, so it's really just a simple matter of dismantling this thing. Uh, pretty much the way we put it together. So hopefully we won't make too much of a mess of it. And typically the silicone won't stick to just about anything. When you see it sticking to something like glass, it's because it's getting old. All right, and hopefully we can get our little pen insert here out of there without destroying anything. So it's just a matter of pulling that out. That worked. Pull out our little vents. Now we just need to get these guys out. And it should be just a matter of twisting them since they have a thread. Maybe some pliers will do the trick. And I should be able to just to turn it and have it unscrew itself from in there. That looks pretty good. All right. Let me clean this up and we'll pour our first batch. All right, I cleaned up around the rim and you can clearly see through to the bottom and those vents. And you might be asking yourself, how is a vent on the bottom not a drain? Well, they are kind of gonna be drains at first. When I start to pour, they'll push the air out and start to drain, but then I'm gonna put it down on the glass and that should seal it and I should be able to pour the rest without having much of a leak, hopefully. I'm just gonna use my aluminum rod because I'm just kind of pushing my luck with that pen. And I know if I mess with it too much, I'm gonna end up with ink all over me. So I'm gonna take a little bit of Vaseline and I'm gonna smear it all over this rod. Now I can just poke it in to the hole. Hope nobody's taking any of this out of context. Now I can mix my resin and pour it. And right about now you're thinking to yourself, man, this is really complicated for that little tiny thing. But if you want to do this and be able to repeat it and make more of them, you kind of have to come up with some way to make a mold of something. While this seems convoluted, you got to do it one time. And after you've got the mold made, it's just a matter of pouring these things and you can make three at a time. And it would only take me like an hour to get a dozen of these things done. And I want to make a really very buoyant mix. So I'm going to use my 10% mix, which means six grams of part A, 1.2 grams of micro balloons. We'll mix that up until it's a nice creamy consistency. And then we put six grams of the second part. All right, and that does it. And now it's a matter of blending these things and still until it starts to kick off. And then I'm just gonna pour it off the paper a little bit. And then I'm gonna set it down so it doesn't leak. I'll pour these things just so they're starting to get close to the top, but not really high cause they're gonna expand. All right, it's been like 20 minutes, so I'm just gonna yank this uh, rod out of here. And now we should be able to just take and just twist these guys out. There you go. And there you go. All right, from here, you can go a number of ways, right? You can leave it just like this bare and just put your tentacles in it. Um, you can just take some uh, spray paint and paint it black or yellow, or whatever color you like. Or you can dip it in scented stains that you can dip your soft plastics in. You know, the ones that are usually have a, like a 
really heavy stain, usually bright yellow, something like spike it. Uh, and I would do that right now, but I'm out of it. So we're going to paint this. All right, before we paint, let's just do a couple of modifications. First, I want to sand down the uh, blunt end. I don't want to get too carried away. Now it does have a, a few bubbles in it, but I'm not going to get too fussy. All right, let's do one more thing. Let's make a couple of divots up here for eyes. All right, so with that, I think I'm ready to go ahead and do a little bit of painting. I'm not gonna get fancy. It's just a matter of putting some color down, putting the eyes on and getting it screwed in to some soft plastic. All right, so I've started painting it without the camera on. Sorry about that. But I'm just putting a, a green base coat. And you can paint this with whatever you want. You can just use Sharpies if you want to. And now I'm going to use this color shift paint. And this stuff goes from like a deep brownish red to a violet. So we'll see how that looks. All right, that's got a weird, interesting look. All right, now I'm going to glue some eyes on it. And as with everything else, you can keep the eyes as simple as possible. Uh, you can just do some little stick on eyes like this one, or you can just draw them on with a Sharpie, or you can get fancy and get some 3D eyes and put it on there. What I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to put a tiny droplet of some UV resin, and we'll drop a little black bead in there. Hit it with some UV. All right, there it is with the eyes on it. Let's see what it's going to look like when we have uh, the tentacles on it. And I'm just using this rubber skirt material and I've got to get it into that hole. So what I'm going to do is take this thin wire and tape this thing onto it. And the idea is you want it on there firm enough so you can stretch the fibers. And then you want to pull it through. And once you get it through, you want to stretch the fibers and just slide it on the fibers to wherever you want it and the length of those tentacles you want. And I think, I think that's about right right there. I can cut it off. And then eyeball the equivalent length on the other side. So I think that looks pretty good. All right, now I'm going to take this Senko and I'm going to cut it back to about where it's the same diameter as the bottom of this little gizmo. We just screw it in there. And there you go. Now I just need to rig it on a, on a jig or a worm hook. All right, let's see what we got. Kind of like this weighted uh, worm hook. Now it's Texas rigged and I can just fish this like a, a wacky rig. Just drag it across the bottom and the head will float on top. All right, enough of this nonsense. It's time to get this thing out on the lake. So the next footage you'll see will be this thing in the lake. All right, so it's time to put this thing to the test and get out here in between the thunderstorms and rainstorms and hopefully catch a fish. But just in case, I just want to say thank you to everybody for watching. If everybody gives me a thumbs up, thank you very much. That really does help. And everybody who's been commenting and offering suggestions and even asking questions, uh, it really makes it interesting and worthwhile for me. And if I actually catch a fish, I'll put the footage right here after this. We'll see you next Friday. All right, like second cast. Little ones like it.
They like it. Little tiny guy. Let's see if we can upsize. 